Hello everyone, welcome to SIUK India webinar. Thank you for joining us today. We are now live with the University of West London. We have Karan Mehra, the South Asia manager with us today who will let us know more about this special webinar session. Please feel free to post all the questions in the chat box on the right. We will answer all the questions after the presentation during the Q&A session. So let's start over to you, Karan. Okay, uh, short. Sure. Thank you, Deepika. Thank you for introducing uh, me. So uh, actually, I am Ashish from University of West London. Karan was supposed to join, uh, but I will be yes, undertaking okay. the I'll be undertaking the session, and uh, I will be we will discuss about uh, University of West London details, the programs, uh, the courses that are available, the intakes ahead, and. Uh, you know, I'm sure the students who would be watching, they will be having some queries or many queries. Uh, they can always post their query and we will deal with those queries towards the end of the session. So during the session, when I speak, I will just share a, a presentation uh, so that students have something to, to look to, to while I speak. Please hold on. Yeah, so I hope you are able to to see the screen that I have shared and uh, a little bit about the University of West London, kind of an introduction about the university. Uh, overall, University of West London is a 35th ranking university across the UK by the Guardian University Guide 2022. So overall, it's a top 40 university across the UK. And uh, another thing apart from the high ranking that the university has is, is the rise that it has shown over, over the years. Uh, so, you know, it used to be around, let's say, 80 or 90th ranking university across the UK three or four years uh, back. But now it's around 35th. And so what we are doing here is, you know, I know that the students would be listening to this and all these information the students can take in and fit in as a part of their research. You know, I'm sure when students would be uh, doing their research about going to the UK, which university to go to, these are some crucial bits of information which students will find very useful and handy as a part of their overall research. So this is just getting to know about University of West London and uh, moving ahead. So, so it's also the top modern university in London for overall satisfaction by National Student Survey 2022. Uh, also the University of the Year for Student Experience in the Times and Sunday Times Good University Guide 2021. That's the last year. So we are very happy. One thing that the students who are currently studying at the University of West London are very happy and very satisfied. So this is what is denoted by you know these couple of awards or recognitions that I have mentioned, the uh, University of the Year for Student Experience and you know the, for the overall satisfaction in National Student Survey. Another thing that I'd like to point out about University of West London is the kind of uh, achievements that it has on the careers front. So from the logo itself, you see it says the career university. And uh, this is denoted in the fact that it has a very, very high graduate employability. So let's say the fourth point, you see 98% of uh, our graduates are in employment or further study, uh, which is the data published by HESA. HESA is the Higher Education Statistics Agency of the British government. The university has also been awarded by the Association of Graduate Careers Advisory Services. So it's a membership quality standard. Coming to the teaching quality, so the TEF or the Teaching Excellence Framework is a silver. And uh, also the Business School of the University was awarded as a Business School of the Year across the UK. And so this is, so I, I overall I've mentioned the general rankings of the university and the general achievements of the university. Going ahead in the slides, I will also inform the students about specific or course rankings and you know a few details which will be specific to particular courses. The university, just to add a few, university also received the uh, award for best student union in London. So 
the student union is very strong and when i go there to the campus and when you go there as students you will realize it the the way they take care of you know different aspects of students interest is very very uh, commendable westmont enterprise hub is a kind of a startup incubator and uh, it has it has already 50 plus startups which have received assistance uh, quite important for students who have uh, entrepreneurial aspirations or startup aspirations uh, recent there are many industry partners uh, with with west london uh, one of them and the recent one that i that i uh, know is the amazon web services it's uh, it's a world renowned uh, you know web services company and it's one of uwl is now a partner with amazon web services as well now another thing that students would consider which is very very crucial for them would be the location of the university where the university is located so the university is located in west of london as the name suggests but to be specific in areas like in areas like ealing and brentford uh, these it, it's typically a zone 3 of london so not the you know not the exact center of london and not the extreme outskirts of london it's it's in in between uh, so to to locate it uh, you know better so let's say it's 20 minutes away from the heathrow airport by direct tube or taxi 30 minutes away from central london area central london is something which is popular with students or many other people would have seen uh, if they had been to the uk or even if not you know they would have seen in the media a lot of times uh, another thing that i would like to share about the location this is something that i particularly like and I understand that when students go to uh, study internationally, the the essence of international exposure, I would uh, the international education is I would say the exposure. Of course, quality academics play a part, but but you know the kind of exposure they receive is very very important to to complete the overall experience of international study and. Uh, a lot of th that exposure will come through the presence of the industry. So uh, this is where the location plays a very important role. So just a quick statistic or a quick glimpse, 50% of the world's 300 top companies have headquarters within 15 miles of UWL campus. So good opportunities for, for projects, good opportunities for the guest lectures and all these things and later for the, you know, the final placements and all as well. These are the two campuses that the university has, Ealing and Brentford, both are pretty close to each other, uh, 1.5 miles away from each other. And there is a free shuttle bus that keeps on running between these two campuses. Uh, there are also four or five different university student accommodations as well near the near both these campuses. And the free shuttle bus, it connects the, the uh, two campuses and the major, uh let's say stations uh and the university campuses as well so it's pretty easy for students to commute a little bit about the facilities of the university i have dedicated one entire slide for the facilities and it actually deserves it because the university has recently spent 150 million pounds uh in campus investment and a few of the pictures that I have, I have pasted here that you can see three floors of library 24 7 accessible the university has its own radio station run by by the students themselves definitely more more relatable to media and journalism students uh, there are the teaching spaces the new teaching spaces new and renovated uh, the blast you know blast fm the university's own radio station as i mentioned the westmont enterprise hub which i earlier mentioned as well uh, the university also has courses related to hospitality uh, because of which it has facilities like the west london food innovation lab for the culinary students the, there is a four star savoy suit facility uh, inside the university of west london uh, which is very very unique I, I don't think any other university has that currently. Then there is the university also is very well connected to the Heathrow Airport. Earlier I mentioned it's very, very close in terms of distance, but also it's very, very close in terms of the, the relationship that the managements share. So when you go to the Heathrow, 
uh, when you land there, you'll see that many students will be will be uh, working there, and a lot of those students will be from the University of West London. It's a very big source for part-time work. I would say definitely full-time as well because we offer those kind of uh, courses in aviation management and other aviation courses. So the the Heathrow has also sponsored their the a flight pad simula simulator for aviation students inside the university. They have also sponsored the Heathrow archives in, as well. So just to pick a few and the key ones that I've mentioned here, definitely if students want to have, uh, you know, to know more about the university campus and facilities, can they can go to the website and there is a, a, a free tour as in a, a 3D tour, which is available for the university, for anyone who goes to the university website. Moving on, so to a quick glimpse of the courses that the university offers. So I'll take you through the eight schools that the university has, uh, you know, starting with, let's say, the School of Computing and Engineering courses related to computer science, courses related to civil engineering. These are the these are the courses that we have. Uh, what we don't have under the School of Computing and Engineering is mechanical, chemical engineering, uh, aeronautical engineering these are these are the ones that we don't have now again the courses under these two areas would be at the bachelor's and master's level bachelor's would be you know, many many different courses i would say you know civil that that would be civil engineering civil and environmental engineering uh, there is a construction project management we do have an architecture course as well computer science again there would be approximately 15 different courses in bachelor's with the you know, with the bsc computer science and uh, information technology and then there would be specific courses as well like cyber security computer games technology uh, masters again we have recently started uh, the not so recent but then you know it's a new addition the msc artificial intelligence as well there is also uh, msc health informatics as well which is which is under the school of computing and engineering but but students from a healthcare or pharma background can apply for that particular course as well uh, of course all these may be a bit of overload of information but uh, you know you, uh, of course you don't need to take down all the information and for your process you can uh, always be in in contact with your counselors they will they they are experienced in the process they have all those all these information already and they'll be able to help you and guide you uh, regarding all these details another thing that you can do is you can always type down your query in the chat box and we will be able to answer that towards the end of the session moving further a quick glimpse about the london school of film media and design courses related to journalism media fashion design interior design graphic design all these are the kind of courses that we have and uh, there is one popular course which i know that because you know i was recently seeing an application from a student for this particular course so that's the ma advertising branding and communication course which is there uh, students will receive a very good exposure in in terms of uh, uh, the industry which is there because you know london is a big media hub or fashion hub uh, you know so they will definitely receive a good exposure in in terms of these courses london college of music is a world renowned school of music which is uh, you know it, it it is one of the best across the world and it has its presence uh, across the world through its its music centers or uh, the students who are studying music they'll be able to understand you know because they go through these grade level examinations and lcm undertakes those grade level examinations through its centers across the world musicians like freddie mercury have have uh, studied from this particular uh, college law and criminology bachelors and masters in various uh, courses llb is there uh, the LLM with various specializations are there, criminology courses are there. Uh, next is the College of Nursing, Midwifery and Healthcare. There are many courses, I would say, under this particular particular school, but, but a lot of them are not open to international students. And a few to name which are open to international students would be, let's say, the Public Health, Bachelors and Masters in Public Health is open. There is a Bachelors in Social Work, which is there. Uh, there is there is uh, 
M uh, the MSc Bioinformatics and BSc Biomedical Sciences as well. These are open as well. And another one course that I mentioned, MSc Health Informatics, which is technically comes under the School of Computing and Engineering, but but uh, it accepts students from uh, pharma or healthcare background as well. Moving on to the School of Human and Social Sciences, uh, courses related to psychology, uh, forensics. Again, UWL is very, very uh, strong in terms of offering the psychology courses. I think it was ranked top modern university in, in London for, for, for in offering psychology courses. Uh, there is the MSc Psychology Conversion course, which is again, which draws a lot of applications from, from uh, the, the subcontinent. And uh, then there, there, is, there are the forensics courses as well, bachelor's and master's both. London Geller College of Hospitality and Tourism is a 70 year old school of hospitality and tourism offering courses in hospitality, aviation, food business management, culinary arts. Then there would be the tourism and aviation, a combined course and masters. All these are the various courses which are, which are available. Uh, the last but not the least, the Claude Littner Business School, which is uh, all, which was also the uh, business school of the year in 2019, and it has various business courses. You know, starting with the MBA, then there would be the International Business Management, uh, MSc Digital Marketing is a very popular course right now because I understand that very few masters, uh, I mean, sorry, there are very very few full-fledged masters in digital marketing. There are very, you know, various certificate courses or short courses, but as far as a full-fledged masters is concerned, there are very, very few MSc, you know, masters in digital marketing. And then there would, in bachelors, again, there would be various other courses uh, related to accountancy, finance, uh, marketing, management, uh, all these, all these other courses that we, that we have. Moving ahead, uh, a quick glimpse of the fees and scholarship, just to just to have an idea. So our our undergrad fees are thirteen thousand two hundred and fifty pounds a year. That's a straight fees for all the bachelor's courses that we have. Masters is thirteen thousand seven hundred fifty pounds a year. MBA is a fifteen thousand pounds a year. MBA is slightly and generally more a little more expensive than the masters, other masters courses that we have. The intakes I have already mentioned September and January are the in January or February are the intakes that we have, and uh, we if you can see we also have the extended postgrad and the enhanced extended postgrad uh, available with us. So the if I talk about the most recent intake that is the extended postgraduate graduate intake that is the June intake that we have. Fees is also mentioned thirteen. Uh, sorry, 14,975 pounds for 15 months. Uh, enhanced extended is 16,800 pounds for 18 months. Now, what is the difference between the master's extended master's and enhanced extended master's? It is definitely in terms of the duration and fees, but what differentiates it basically is the entry requirements. And that we will cover in the next slide. You will have a little clarity on why are these different and which mode is is uh, suitable for you which one should you apply for before that let's quickly address the scholarships i know this is scholarship is something which is very important to students and uh, uh, if i if i speak about scholarship basically the effective fee structure or the fees that they pay is is very very important and crucial information for students so uh, as far as the scholarships are concerned what we have is the international ambassador scholarship which is up to 5,000 pounds. And how can the students apply? The students can apply once they hold an offer from the university. So this is a prerequisite. They need to hold an offer from the university. Then they can make an online application uh, for the scholarship. And the scholarship form will contain essay kind of questions, you know, questions like, tell us three things that make you a worthwhile candidate to receive the scholarship. So, you know, to be answered in around 200, 300 words, there is no particular grade requirement, marks requirement that, you know, this is something that you need to have to apply for the scholarship. 
another one another thing that I, that students you know kind of miss out which can help them uh, you know save money uh, basically you know as 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 we discuss uh, and as i understand it is it is basically about the overall effective fees that you pay and not just the scholarship so you know uh, let's say there is a 5% early settlement discount so let's say if students have uh, in they are in a financial position to pay the entire fees then they can deduct a 5% and they can pay the remainder of the fees basically if they don't opt for the installment scheme we do have the installment scheme and if students would like to go for it they can they are almost welcome to go for it but if they don't go for it they can deduct a 5% and that is a good savings you know for example let's say you know if someone is going for mba 15000 pounds is the fees if you deduct 5% that would be 750 pounds close to around 7 uh, you know 75000 rupees and Yep, that's how it works out. And for all these processes, the more details, when you should pay the fees and how you should apply for scholarship, all these things, you can always be in touch with your counselors, as I mentioned, and we will be there to guide you step by step throughout your application process as well. So uh, need not bother to take in all the information and, you know, because it can become a bit of, bit uh, you know, overload of information. I can understand that. A, a, again, a glimpse of the entry requirements so that students can understand our general entry requirements. So there are two kinds of entry requirements, I would say. This is the general entry requirement as in student, just to give a glimpse and understanding of the students, where do we stand in terms of the entry requirement. The specific or the final entry requirement and the final decision is always taken after after the students have made an application after their application has gone through the admissions team and approved by the course leader or the academic team now the in terms of percentage for the direct masters what we required is a 55 percent for bachelors we required a 60 percent in their 12th and uh, for you know for extended and enhanced enhanced extended masters uh, it is meant for students who have a percentage which is lesser to 55 percent or foundation courses you know which is you know foundations are applicable to students who have a percentage which is lesser than 60 percent in their hsc or or uh, 12th standard and uh, of course so there is also a gap requirement so you can see a quick pass out after so 2017 and 2020 so a maximum of five years of study to study gap for master students a maximum of two years of study to study gap for bachelor students and IELTS is 6.5 no less than 5.5 for direct um, direct masters for bachelors it's 6.0 no less than 5.5 and depending on your IELTS score you can choose either an extended or enhanced extended masters and we do have IELTS waivers as well, but they there are specific boards where we are able to waive off IELTS. Not the entire country state boards are applicable for IELTS waivers. Of course, the CBSC, ICSC, the international boards, they are, you know, they are considered for waivers, be it anywhere in the country. MBA will require two years of work experience. MSc, international business management, they, the applicants need to be from a commerce economics or business background uh, you know again this was just a glimpse and um, you can always be in touch with your counselors for the detailed entry requirements another thing that i'd like to say about the foundation courses that we have for undergrad is that you know almost all of the popular courses we do have a foundation year for them and also so let's say september is the major intake uh, for most of the universities, one thing that I'd like to differentiate is, I would say, you know, I, I wouldn't be wrong if I say that even January or February is our major intake. Time and again, if you, if, if, you know, if I, if I see the numbers from, you know, past couple of years, our February intake had, a, you know, a bigger number of student intake as compared to the September intake, you know, because we done our foundation courses in September, uh, in February as well, the extended, enhanced extended, all these various uh, courses under various schools, we, we run it, you know, in our February intake as well. So, you know, that is something which I would say is an advantage because a lot of students, I would, I understand that, you know, they would be students currently, as in they would be either appearing for the examinations or get to appear for the examinations. They would want to go for September intake, but may not 
make it to September intake because of delay in their academic uh, documents or you know general rush. So they always have an option of deferring their their uh, admission to the next intake uh, as well. Okay. So moving ahead, uh, you know a little bit about the in just a glimpse of the extended master's courses that we have i have shared specifically this one because this is the current intake the june intake which is there so the courses the extended master's courses are offered in under three schools the business computing and engineering and hospitality and tourism so these are the courses that we have and uh, next will be the september intake and again september has you know all the courses running which which are there in our overall portfolio there is, uh, you know, what I can also do is I can share a course finder link of the university website and you will be able to to have a look at the various courses and the modules of the courses which you're going to study the career progression uh, as in what you know, how can you progress in your career after studying a particular course, you can also have a look at the faculty profiles, you know, who are the who are the uh, faculty who will be teaching you ahead in that particular course. Yep, how to apply a pretty straightforward process that we have, you know, just as any other university in the UK or most of the universities in the UK. Uh, application comes, we assess, and then the, you know, the, we, we, when the student, we make an offer, once the student accepts the offer, then the, they have to go through a precast discussion. That is a short discussion that we undertake. And uh, then they, the, you know, after that, after submission of CAS documents, the students can uh, apply for their visa upon receiving CAS and uh, yeah, then they can fly to the UK for, for, for our campus in London. I think, yep, that's all from me. And uh, uh, thank you so much for being a part of this session today. And uh, you, I, I'd be happy to, to consider questions if students have and uh, let me know for any queries that you have anything that you would like to discuss or for me to elaborate i'd be happy to do so thank you so much ashish for such a, such a knowledgeable presentation we are now moving towards the q a session the first question the student is asking is what are the visa and application deadlines okay so the visa and application deadlines are different for different intakes and uh, for the extended extended intake that is in june we are yet to come up i mean we have almost come up with a deadline but we you know we'll be finalizing it on monday and that's how you will be able to get to you know you'll be able to get to know about the deadlines and again september is a bit far for us to set a deadline and you can always be in touch with your counselors, you know, for, for specific deadlines. Uh, another thing, uh, apart from the specific deadlines that I would like to mention is, it is, it is not only about the deadline, you know, because let's say the deadlines that we release uh, from West London, I can say is the general deadline, you know, for example, let's say this is the deadline for you to pay the fees and we will, we will close all of our courses. Uh, but there can be specific deadlines, you know, for example, let's say the popular courses, they, the seats may run out faster than the, some other courses. So, uh, you need to keep that thing in mind and, uh, as early as possible, you need to, you need to get in touch with your counselors or the university staff in order to pay the, you know, pay the fees and accept your offer and, or at least reserve a seat. You know, for West London, we have this facility that students can reserve a seat by paying a 250 pounds. That is the registration fees. And then they can carry out their process uh, ahead. You know, that may be time taking the deposit on all these things, but they can at least register and reserve their seat by paying the 250 pounds. As far as the visa is concerned, I, you know, they, the, the embassy is taking a lot of time to process the visa. So this is something also that they need to consider and uh, uh, so that they make it to, they make it, they, you know, they, they are on time when they, when they uh, fly to the UK. Uh, yep. This is what I can share about the deadlines. Just be in touch with the counselors for specific deadlines. They will be able to coordinate with us and they themselves are aware of much more details. Uh, they will be able to guide you. Thank you, Ashish. The next question. 
uh, is it still possible to apply for a scholarship for the september start yes so our september applications are very much open for all the courses and you can apply first for your offer once you receive an offer then you can uh, make an application for the scholarship there is an online scholarship and why i am saying that you need an offer to make the the uh, scholarship application is because there will be a student id which will be required for the scholarship application and that will only come once you receive the offer and the international ambassador scholarship that i mentioned students can apply for that we will share the for students who already hold the offer we will share a link uh, in the chat box and you will be able to have a look at the scholarship application process the questions which are there and all these things thank you the next question do you have student accommodation if so how does it work okay so yes we do have the uh, university connected student accommodations as in they are not the on campus student accommodation uh, which is very very rare and uh, we do have the university student accommodation so the university student accommodations would be four or five in numbers there are four or five different university accommodations uh, close by the university campuses and uh, there are various levels of rooms or various types of rooms and uh, places that you can opt uh, for example the on suit is there the the studio is there all these are the various ones and you will be able to find these details on the university website that we have mentioned the the contact details of the concerned person who will be able to help students in order to book the student accommodation or any further details they require related to the student accommodation which they are not able to find on the university website thank you the next question what is the ielts score required also do you accept any other english test such as duolingo pt or anything else okay yes so we are able to accept ielts we are able to accept pt toefl uh we are we are also accepting language cert examination as well but one examination that we are not able to accept is the duolingo so uh for west london i would advise students not to to go for duolingo but for any other examination the ielts requirement that we have is for bachelors a 6.0 no less than 5.5 for masters a 6.5 no band less than 5.5 uh if by chance students have haven't been able to secure the required bands in ielts and if they have taken the uk vi ielts they can also go for a pre sessional uh, english course we we offer that as well and uh, the the pre sessional is divided into two types one is the 8 week pre sessional the other is a 12 week pre sessional uh, which is there and it depends on the band requirements that you have you know which will which will be better for you it depends on the band requirements thank you the next question what is the employability rate for post graduates okay so for the for i i i don't know specifically for post grad students but but yes the one one figure that i know uh, is the 98% which was again you know i i can't say specifically for post grad or for undergrad or for any particular uh, you know school of, of students because this these these uh, exercise or the research is not done by us not done by the university so even let's say the 98% figure that i have quoted is by hisa hisa is a high, in the higher education statistics agency and that is a british government agency an independent agency that conducts independent exercise or independent study yep what if you want to understand in detail you can go to their their uh, website you will be able to find much more information but you know the one that i mentioned the 98% is the overall uh, graduate employability in 2018 and when the study was conducted uh, it was one of the highest uh, in, across the uk so you know that is something that we the the university is able to support very well the students the career team of the university to be specific they have very good support i would say 
the the they are the ones who will organize the career fairs in the university they are the ones who will organize various professional workshops uh, for the students you know there would be one workshop for let's say the resume preparation one workshop for let's say the interview skills uh, the professional skills and all these things so that's how it's it's an overall process and uh, what uh, what students should keep in mind i would say is is how well they are prepared to crack the interview the opportunities will be there but the students need to prepare themselves in order to um, so that they are able to crack the final final interview thank you the next question hello uh, are there offline management programs also available with the university for the indian students so they are asking about the remote courses mm -hmm. okay so uh, if i understand correctly the the university right now offers only offline programs the there are no online programs as such so uh, as far as the remote courses or let's say if if students want to be based in india and then they would want to uh, study that is not possible they now need to go to the university campus and thus all the studies will be in the campus on campus and uh, offline and uh, yep so it was it was only a duration when we introduced the online studies and that too was a mix of online and offline uh, during the pandemic now because everything is open uh, and if, you know all the studies are offline and it's a full campus experience for students thank you ashish the next question after foundation years how many years does it take to obtain a ug degree okay for uk and uh, specifically i can surely say about west london so for for bachelor students it will be a one year of foundation and then three year of bachelor degree so overall with foundation a bachelor degree is a four year uh, course and yeah it will take four years for you to complete the course with foundation after foundation it will take three years for you to complete uh, the course thank you the next question uh, do we need to submit a personal statement along with the application okay yep thank you for pointing this out this is one thing which we have which we have uh, uh, changed or we have we have amended since a couple of intakes we used to require the personal statement earlier now we don't require the specific sop or the personal statement but yes we do require the students to answer personal statement type of questions which are there in the application form so you know questions like you know why do you want to study this particular course or how will your previous study and experience help you study this course specifically you know so questions like these which are sop kind of questions but they are not the sop to be particular thank you the next question what is mba application deadline uh again so there is no deadline as such uh, for the september intake right now uh september intake the applications are open the applications are open for the extended masters in june intake as well as far as the deadline is concerned for the current june intake that we will notify and we will come up and you know we'll we'll finalize the deadline on monday uh so if it were on monday i would have given you an answer but definitely you can you can uh, be in touch with us or contact us for, for the deadline of the extended masters on monday but september there is still time there is still time to to uh, finalize the deadlines for september intake thank you the next question do you have any six months a foundation course which can give me ielts waiver unfortunately not we don't have any any uh, course which will which will waive off the ielts yet but to put it in a different way we do have courses we do have let's say foundation courses or the extended route courses where the ielts requirement is lesser than that of the uh, straight the direct masters or the bachelors so let's say if you go for foundation the ielts requirement will be 5.5 whereas the bachelor's is 6.0 if you go for one of the enhanced extended masters that we have the ielts requirement will be 6.0 instead of 6.5 for the direct masters so it it's manageable that ways 
and the another option that i told regarding english uh, is the pre sessional the pre if let's say if you manage to score lesser than that of the entry requirement in english then you can can uh, you know get into the pre sessional english course but no particular course which will completely wave off ielts thank you the next question i have 3 years gap after my graduation can i apply for the masters 3 years gap for a masters is very well acceptable for us and uh, so again to give a quick uh, info about the gap requirement for a masters what we able to accept is a maximum of 5 years of gap except for the mba for the mba we don't have any gap requirement as such so you know students be it you know they would have completed their bachelor's 7 years 8 years back they are very well accepted yeah one thing that we need to keep in mind is you know even for mba is that how well they justify their gap you know for example let's say if they've been working or if they've not been working what else they have been doing this is something to be justified uh, as a part of the application process it helps overall it helps in your application process as well it helps in your visas as well let's say the embassy the uk vi they they take a look that yep there's no gap as such you know the student has been doing some of the other productive uh, during the entire years they will be very happy to to quickly grant a visa otherwise they may have a question or you know something like that thank you the next question will i be granted a post study work visa based on my student visa or do i need to reapply separately okay so the the uk government has confirmed that the students will get the uh, the two years stay back uh, but yep yeah, the students will need to make an application for that so make an application meaning that it is something that they need to apply but yes the uk government has confirmed that stu the students will get the get the stay back thank you the next question what is the application process please explain the application process is is very simple just fill out the application form write down the answers to the questions in the application form the sop kind of uh, questions and uh, then submit it along with the documents the supporting documents your academics your ielts score uh, your you know your any other let's say there can be specific documents like portfolio for certain courses and all these documents are to be submitted if there if and you know we will process the we will process for an offer and once the student receive their offer they can proceed to accept the offer by paying either the deposit or the registration fees and submitting the signed acceptance form to us so that's that's the you know the the application process if students don't have a few documents for example let's say some students may not have the lors or the like letters of recommendations some students right now who are studying currently they may not have their academic documents so for all these students they can still apply and i would recommend them to apply before because uh, because <clears throat> otherwise it may get too late for for the september intake and for them they can apply for a conditional offer the university will issue a conditional offer to them thank you the next question can i apply i am still in my final year of my undergraduate degree in arts okay so if you are in your final year you can still apply and for the for the september intake i would advise that you do apply early because now the kind of uh, overload of applications that the university is going through i would advise all the all the students to make an early application and not wait uh, till the end to to make an application it may be too late otherwise thank you next question i have done my mba from university of wolverhampton uk now i want to pursue a masters course to improve my skills into business and sustainability what are the scope for acceptance okay so unfortunately uh, and thanks for pointing it out for for students this is something that i that i missed out 
to answer your question specifically, because you've done or you already hold a master's. So for West London, it is very, very difficult for students who already hold a master's for them to get into another master's. It's, it's, it's extremely difficult. And uh, so again, no double masters. And by double masters, I, I don't mean, uh, you know, student that let's say if you've done your MBA, you can apply for another master's, let's say MSc Digital Marketing or something. Any, you know, a second application or second degree in, in the master's level, that is, that is something which is very difficult for West London to consider uh, applications for. Uh, to give a general general point of view on this, that students who have already completed their master's, they they can only go for a, a PhD or a doctorate level course. It's, it's, it'll be very difficult for them to go for a master's again, unless you know it is very very students have a very very strong point to be able to convince the course leader or the academic team. Then it is a different thing, but otherwise it'll be very difficult for them to get into it. Thank you, Ashish. The next question, what about the job placements? Yep, so the as far as the placements are concerned, so students again need to be in touch with the careers team at the university. They are the ones who will help you, support you and guide you for the placements, for, for the final placements. And uh, the overall, the you know, earlier I mentioned about the location of the university. So the university has strong industry partners. The university has a very strong location in terms of the industry accessibility for the students. And the university is also, you know, also has a very strong award winning career team as well. Uh, so all these are the support which is there for students, but the students have to be proactive the students have to work hard for getting final placements as well uh, you know there will be opportunities but what can any any career team or any professional uh, professional counselor can do they can they can put you in front of the interviewer but but you have to be prepared uh, for for in order to in order to crack the interview and uh, the students need to be proactive and they need to put efforts to to you know go get a good job in in the uk thank you ashish the next question so the student uh, there uh, has not done his 12th and mm -hmm. she has pursued a diploma i think it is after 10th so mm -hmm. she is asking is there any why uh, ielts waiver basically there are many students who are asking about the ielts waiver that how can they apply without ielts Sure, Deepika. So I'll just again uh, put some light, throw some light on the IELTS waivers and how it works out. To answer specifically uh, the question of this particular student, uh, students who have done a diploma, they they are not eligible for an IELTS waiver. Twelfth marks, twelfth English marks, is the only basis on which we are able to waive off IELTS. For diploma, for diploma students, they will need an IELTS or PTE or some other CELT examination uh, for for uh, to meet the English language requirements. For other students, to to uh, address the questions of students in general, uh, for IELTS waiver, they need to have 70, 70 marks in twelfth for an IELTS waiver. Uh, for a bachelor degree, for a master's degree, they need to have 75 and above in 12th English, uh, you know, for an IELTS, IELTS waiver. There are specific state boards in the South, which are, which are, which we are able to consider for an IELTS waiver. And, uh, you know, not the boards in North, we are not able to consider the North state boards for IELTS waiver. And, uh, uh, yep, CBSE, ICSE students, or let's say the other national or international board students, yep, we are able to consider them for an IELTS waiver irrespective of the specific area in the country or the subcontinent, I would say. Thank you, Ashish. The next question. My daughter is pursuing 12th exam and want to get admission for MBBS in UK. Do you also support for IELTS and admission process? She's, uh, she is also preparing for NEET exam. Okay, so we we uh, don't have the MBBS uh, course for students. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, 
that is that is something that we don't have at all and you will have to look at other universities and uh, you can get in touch with your counselors they'll be able to help you and support you in in finding a, a good university for mbbs what we have is is let's say biomedical science public health these are the bachelors that we that we have under the university of west london thank you ashish the next question uh, what are the upcoming intakes for universities okay so we have many numerous intakes i would say the the current one is the june intake the next one will be the september intake that will be the direct masters bachelors enhanced extended masters then again there will be the october intake there will be again the extended masters then there will be the february or january intake there will be again the bachelors or direct masters uh enhanced extended masters foundation all these all these other kind of level of courses that we that we have thank you ashish the next question hi sir my bsc bachelors had done in 2014 uh to uh, 2017 due to my backlogs and i had completed my bachelors in 2021 uh am i eligible for to apply for an msc degree okay see generally again as a part of general entry requirement i am speaking generally we don't have a problem with backlogs uh but again it is something that we that i am unable to advise specifically you know generally you know some backlogs it would be fine we don't have a problem with backlogs but if there is anything major or anything extreme that then then we will have to discuss it with our admissions team and uh, they will be able to specifically guide regarding these specific cases so for you i would advise that if you can just ask your counselor to to drop an email to us and uh, we will be able to advise you on on your specific case thank you the next question i completed my bachelor's uh, in uh, bcom and i wish to do international business management and i also have ielts 6 band overall score what are the chances of acceptance okay so great so basically to advise you if you want to apply you can definitely come on for the msc international business management course that is a good course i i i like the course structure particularly of that particular course there are optional modules as well and uh, there is an entry requirement for students to come from a business Uh, background only they need to have a commerce or economics or business degree which you do have now one thing that we'd like to dis- uh, you know i'd like to comment on is the ielts score that you have so let's say because you have 6.0 uh you will not be able to qualify the english language requirement uh of the direct masters because that is 6.5 as i mentioned but if you are you know if you if we would be happy to consider you for the enhanced extended masters that is in september and that is an 18 months program and uh, the you will be able to meet the all the entry requirements of that particular program otherwise the uh, you know other option is if you can retake an ielts or a pte you can come on for the direct masters but otherwise you can definitely come for the enhanced extended msc international business management thank you sir so you have an ug veterinary course and what are the entry requirements for a 12th trader i am so sorry we don't have the veterinary courses and uh, yep we don't have the as, as i said you know for for the healthcare for uh, these there are specific courses that we that the university has open for international students that would be let's say the biomedical sciences or the public health uh health informatics bioinformatics these are the courses that we have but not the wet courses thank you ashish the next question is how much marks do we need for 12th english i think it is 70% no less than 70% am i correct okay. yeah so, yep yeah. so if 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 you're talking about the uh, marks as in the for an entry the marks in your 12th for bachelor's that would be a 60% a minimum of 60% is what we require and yep the 70 the student may be confused by by you know listening to the 70 because 70 is the marks that we require in english in 12th 
for an IELTS waiver for bachelors. So these are two different things. As far as the percentage in 12th is concerned, that is uh, 60%. Thank you, Ashish. We have covered all the questions from the chat box. Many thanks for answering all the questions so well and sharing your knowledge with us. We are now moving towards the end of this seminar session. I would request if you have anything else you would like to put forward for the audience who are watching this live right now. Okay, so I would start by again, you know, thanking to Deepika and the team for organizing the, the, the session for us. It was very, very uh, good. For, I'm, I'm glad I participated in this and I hope that I would have cleared the students doubt and presented information which is relevant to students. And this is just information that we have presented. Do a bit of your research so that you are able to find a right university for you. And uh, I am very sure that you will, the students will have a good time to, to when, when they go to the UK to do your uh, studies. And uh, it's a very good experience over there. The study uh, curriculum, the study methodology is completely different. It is very proactive. It will teach you a lot apart from the academics. You will also gain a lot of life skills by, by living in the UK. Our campuses in the in, in London are very, very good. They have a very good location. The, the faculty will are very supportive. And I'm, you know, that's how uh, I say this because, you know, I say this because we have we have testimonials to support. Uh, the, the students are very happy. The students are very satisfied. And that's how when you speak to our current students, you, they'll give you a clear picture. And, you know, I'm, I'm very sure that the students will have an amazing time ahead in the University of West London and in the UK as well. I have already shared my email ID. If you have any queries that you want me to address to directly or the university to address directly, please feel free to drop an e email to us or you can always be in touch with your counselors. They would be uh, happy to connect you to us for any of your queries uh, ahead. Thank you so much for your kind words. To all the audience, if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact the SIUK India offices. We'll be more than happy to help you. In the end, thank you so much, everyone, for your valuable time today. Please take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.